So I'm with my favorite guy. There's never any doubt that Brent from Shinedown is one of my favorite people on the planet, not just in rock and roll, but on the planet. And I just said to you before we started rolling, I said, I'm going to see you like in like less than a month, which is incredible because we've got, of course, the Revolutions live tour with you, P. Roach and Spirit Box. You want to talk about a kick ass bill and an amazing show coming to the big ginormo dome here, the incredible Prudential Center. Yes. I know, too. The cool thing about it is we thought we would do something different this time and we would do the show inside. <laughs> Good no, but it's like. I can't remember the last time we played the Prudential Center. It's been You played a- right after COVID. We did a family reunion show with you guys. Okay. Everybody was just coming out of the cocoons. Right. And it was just a magical night where people were kind of crying and blowing off steam. And it was you yeah. and Aaron and Candlebox was on the bill with us that That's night. Right. It was just a, a right. phenomenal, phenomenal night. I feel like the last couple of years, at least for me feel almost like a little bit of just a blur. We're like, did we do that? We did do that. Did we do that? It's just been a crazy time. Well, I remember when all of that was going on and me and you were talking to each other really early on when the pandemic had hit. You were hit. my second Zoom. I didn't even know how to operate the friggin' Zoom. And me and you were just like, let's connect and start talking about crap. Yeah. And you were you were the second person I ever Zoomed with. I didn't even know how to turn it on. Someone had to come over and show me. But we talked about it right out of the gate. What we said and what we were discussing was that no matter what, this too shall pass. But the roar that will come from this in regards to specifically music and events where people are together and that camaraderie and live music, that it will be unlike anything you have ever seen before. And it most definitely is. I mean, there is a show going on Every single second of the day, every city, every country. I mean, it is full on, it is full tilt boogie in the live music world. And I see what the bands are putting out and what the audiences are giving back. And I think that's the reward. Like I look into these crowds and I see kids, kids in the front row with their hands in the air on dad's shoulders. And I'm just like, look at these kids, you know, at the Metallica show like in the pit, like it's just crazy. So yeah, I feel that that energy and that love is so there. So let's, before we start talking about something else, I want to talk a little bit about this tour, putting together this tour and uh, you getting together with, you know, Jacoby is somebody else who's also so super positive about everything in his life. I love reading his affirmations and the things he's grateful for. And he's kind of come full circle career wise. I love spirit box, the buzz on this band, you know, uh, uh, Courtney and the band, like, it's just, it's an incredible bill. So talk to me about how you decided to get this bill together. So there were a couple of things that were factors in it. So, you know, going back from last year when we brought John Harvey and our boy Jelly Roll, and that really, you know, that tour raised a lot of eyebrows. You started Jelly Roll on the rock trajectory. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. You You brought him out. You introduced him to everybody. You showed everybody who he was and what he could do. And and that was you guys. Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I am so unbelievably proud of this man and everything that he has been through. And as he has come into his own, uh, when we were touring together, I told him every single day from the first show to the last show that we did of that run, I said, You need to get ready. I know you already know, probably. Do not change this work ethic that you have, this spirit that you have, this energy that you just exude, because the whole world is about to be your oyster, man. Like, you need to buckle up for the ride that's getting ready to happen. We got rolled. We all got rolled. Everybody got rolled. Everybody's like, what the heck? It couldn't happen to a better human being. I'm telling you right now, that guy is a gift from the heavens to everybody. He really, really is. I will gush and gush about him till the day is long because he is just an extraordinary human being. His authenticity, who he is as a person, who he is as a musician and a humanitarian. um, I'm just so happy for him and everything that he's doing. He is just kicking so much ass. But then, so moving past that from last year and then coming into this year, I First of all, we wanted to do a tour with Three Days Grace, and we wanted to bring this young band from Ashes to New Out. 
which we did, you know, being with Three Days Grace, we hold the, it's wild that we hold, you know, these chart positions on rock radio and the billboard. And I remember calling the guys and just saying, man, it has been long enough. Let's just do a tour together. Let's just go out, play all those songs that are number ones for everybody. It was a completely sold out tour from Ashes to New, was able to come out on that. I was so happy. It was very successful. But then what had occurred was I knew that we were going to do two club shows this year. We had a couple of fairs that we had already booked about a year in advance and what have you. And initially, like right around February, March, I didn't know if we were going to do a fall tour. And I basically went to Eric and Barry and Zach and I said, if we were going to do anything and we were going to do that particular time frame this year, I'm only going to do it if we can get two artists. And I told them who it was. They all agreed to it. Um, I called Jacoby personally and he said, well, I mean, we were in the middle of making a record and, and doing some other things, but Jacoby was so awesome about it. He goes, man, if it was anybody else that was calling me, I would have to think about it. But you want to bring Spirit Box on this, too? I said, absolutely. He was like, let's go. And then I reached out to Spirit Box and their team. And again, you know, they got some new music coming already. They just released uh, kind of a teaser this morning. They got yep. something really they got something wicked about yep. to, to come out. It's really cool. Um, but same kind of thing. They were kind of transitioning into the studio. And it was one of those things where they were like, if it was anybody else, it might have been a different uh, scenario. But we just locked in with each other. And we actually just were in Los Angeles together, all of us, Mike and Courtney from Spirit Box, myself and Jacoby. And we did a huge roundtable with each other with Live Nation. And it's going to be coming out very, very shortly. But it was this wicked, awesome moment where we were all able to kind of sit around and talk about life, talk about music, talk about everything that's been going on in the world and really just kind of get to know each other. And it's really dope. I can't wait for people to see it, but this is gonna be a fun tour. Yay, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see you at Prudential Center, September 24th, livenation.com, by the way, to get your tickets, wdhafm.com to get info. Also, you guys have been so generous to me and to us. We have a mutual connection with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I've got a walk coming up on October 29th at Verona Park here in New Jersey. It's my rock and rough team. I kind of named it after my, you know, animal charity, but I get whether you want right. to walk with your dog or you want to walk with your kids, or you want to walk with your friends or you want to walk by yourself. We don't care, but we get everybody out to Verona Park. And I knew Team Rock and Rough was going out. And I know that you guys have raised just a blank ton of money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention for AFSP, I think it was over $150,000 or something with tickets from, you know, the yeah. spring, the spring tour, which is yeah. just incredible. Liz is our New Jersey ambassador here. She runs everything here in Jersey. And when I talked to her about coming out and doing the walk and I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put a call out to the Shinedown folks. I know they're, we love them and they're so about doing all the right things in life. So I know I'm going to hear back. I said, let's see if we can get some autograph stuff. Let me see if I can get on a Zoom with Brent. And she said to me, oh, my gosh, that would be incredible. Like, I I, I can't imagine that that would happen. I said, no, let me see if I can happen. So I, I reach out and I'm just like, hey, can we get maybe something autographed and we can bring it out for Team Rock and Rough and give people the opportunity? You guys were bam Zoom. It was like in my office at the end of the week. So I have it. We've got these amazing, beautiful Revolutions Live tour posters that you autographed for us. So I'm so grateful for that. And then you Happy just hit it. me back and we're just like, you know, you guys hit me back and said, yeah, Brent can get on a Zoom with you. So I wanted to talk to you about your association. Now you're way longer than me. I'm going into year number four, 2020, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm in year number four. You've been associated with AFSP for a way longer time. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions in a row. Uh, tell me how you got associated. And why AFSP, why is this a charity that you guys feel is so important for people to know about? Well, how we got involved in it, um, it had to do with Washington, D.C. and a radio station, D.C. 101. Um, and uh, the thing was, is that they had a walk for Winchester from Lincoln Park passed away. Um, and the One More Light Foundation, and they partnered with um, 
with the, the station there in DC. And they worked with the AFSP. That's how I was introduced to the AFSP. And, um, you know, listen, upon that too, there was this dynamic of, I remember the very first year that I went to the memorial there um, in DC at the Lincoln Memorial and I did my first walk with them that I just had never in all my life witnessed something so profound of a human experience. Powerful, you don't realize it's it's really I have to be kind of be a little bit careful because if I think about it too much, it will get me like really emotional because you're dealing with such a heavy subject matter. You're dealing with something that is so um it's hard to talk about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that suicide has affected their lives because they've either known someone close to them, a friend or a family member, or you've known someone that has had someone that was close to them affected by suicide. You know, the goal that we had going into it and forming that relationship with the AFSP uh, was also the fact that as far as a, a company that really puts all of their efforts into not only awareness and, and getting the message out there so that you're talking about these things so that you can express these things. Um, we were talking before we got on the air here with each other. Um, you know, they do have an extraordinary approval rating in that world of charity, you know, how they look at certain charities. Where's the money going? Is it really going to these organizations? Is it really going to awareness? Are you putting it into the public and in all these regions and these markets and all these different chapters where they're involved in. And they are an organization that is 100% doing all of that. You know, um, you know, they try to build out programs in schools in colleges and, the and they're workplace. always growing. They're always yeah. growing. They have a program now that impressed me so much for senior citizens, people that yeah. have lost pretty much everybody in their life. I mean, it's a very yeah. lonely time as you age your circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, helping, mourning, learning, volunteering, lending support, yeah. celebrating the life of a lost lost loved one, um, feeling that sense of community, prevention. They are always branching out. And I look to when I first got involved with them and what they're doing now, and you cannot believe the evolution of this incredible organization. It's always evolving. It's constantly ongoing. And I think the biggest thing, the very first year that, you know, I went there um, in D.C., next year, we'll, it'll be 13 years that we've been working with them. Um, but at the end of the walk, and I remember that first year that we did it, it was like, I think there was like 8,000 people, you know, and you're just walking. But then at the end, they have a lighting of the candles and they have these people go up and they tell their stories and how it's affected them and what have you. And yes, there is a lot of tears of heartache, but there's also this abundance of, there were all these people that because of the AFSP, someone had contacted someone that knew that somebody was struggling, having a hard time, that they weren't being vocal or verbal about anything, and they prevented a suicide. You know, and they, they got to their friend in time because they knew what to do. They knew to look out for the warning signs and certain things that would be red flags when someone's personality or if they kind of have a shift in their demeanor. All these things are factors that, you know, if you notice somebody is not all there behind the eyes and they've kind of their personality has changed and things like that. Um, you the worst thing you can do is be quiet. Like you have to say something, you have to go, hey, what's going on? And just hearing all of these stories of people where they were on the verge of making a, a decision to take their own life and and they stopped. They were they were able either somebody was able to stop them from it or they were able to really look at the big picture and decide that their life does have meaning, that their life does have worth and that they are necessary and they do belong on this planet. We often tell people, we know that you could be struggling through a lot of different things, but I'm telling you right now, the, the world is much cooler with you in it. Well, you guys have never been a band that was, I don't want to say afraid or reluctant is a better word, reluctant to talk about mental health. You've written countless songs about it. Every, you know, we'll play certain songs. Somebody reached out to me today for Get Up. And they just said, yeah. this is a song I really need to hear today. It was funny because the DJ who was on before me, he's like, I just played that today. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll, you know, I'll, we'll get it on for you. Give me like two hours. But 
there are songs that affect people and touch people. And you've never been afraid to talk about these songs, even on the new record. Uh, A Symptom of Being Human is is a, yes. an amazing song and, and Dead Don't Die and Daylight. Um, yeah. Why has it not been a taboo subject for you guys as a rock band? Why has it always been something where you said, listen, we know people are struggling. I mean, and this is not uh, recent. I'm going back to the beginning of Shinedown. You've always yeah. been very open about struggles you've had and things you've gone through. There's never been a secret or any trying to, I have to act cooler than this or cooler than that. Why right. has it been important for you to be such an open book and, um, and, and to be able to tackle and talk about these subjects? I, I think for me personally, it's that I've never had an issue with my emotions when it comes to how I feel. And a lot of times I'm from a, as a songwriter and I'm the main lyricist in the band. I've never really shied away from when these thoughts come up in my own life because of a situation that I've been in or a scenario or how I was brought up. Because, I mean, I had an upbringing where I had wonderful parents and I had you know, a great foundation with my family and what have you, but kind of being the unique kid growing up, you know, there were people around me that kind of didn't understand why I was the way that I was, but I had no problems um, dealing with perseverance. And what I mean by that is just a lot of doubt with people, like what I wanted to do for a living, that I wanted to be a performer, I wanted to be a singer, I wanted to be a songwriter, I wanted to travel the world, I had a message. I never started writing songs because I wanted to be famous, I started writing songs because I had something to say. And I think that in a way I have been utilized as a vessel um, because a good friend of mine once told me that you don't pick the music, the music will pick you. It's what mm. you do with it. It's what you do with it after that point of like understanding that. And I just want people to know that they're not alone. Like I've had these types of thoughts. I've gone through these scenarios. You know, it's one of the reasons why I named the band Shine Down. It's it's the yin and the yang. So sometimes you shine and sometimes you're down. The so dark and the light. Good, yeah, yeah. The dark yeah, and the light. You, yeah, yeah. Everything that's good has a little bit of bad, and everything that's bad has a little bit of good. You have to find a balance inside of it all. And the thing with the lyrics is a lot of times I've told people over and over again, like sometimes you have to fall into a hole to figure out how to get out of that hole. But I think one thing that's been a very consistent thread through our music is we want people to embrace their tenacity. And, and what I mean by that is you are always going to have different things thrown at you in this lifetime, you know, a symptom of hum a symptom of being human is one of those songs where it's like that whole song is a celebration of understanding that we're all human, but that means we're all a work in progress. And you're allowed to have as many human moments as you need in your lifetime. And so when I think about the thread of a lot of the shine down material, it is understanding that I would tell somebody to not focus so much on a plan B. I know a lot of times people grow up with the people around them saying, Well, what if that doesn't work out or what if this right, doesn't right. happen? You know, what are you going to do then? Don't focus on that negative. Like whatever your A plan is, even if it takes you a minute to kind of figure out what that is, that's still what you need to go after. And we don't want people to be afraid to fail. As a matter of fact, we want you to fail as much as you can. And the reason why is because you're going to need that experience to know what to do next time. But your life and your legacy, it's not going to be built by your failure. It's going to be built by the fact that you refuse to give up. But Every day that you've been given a breath on this planet, utilize it and embrace it. And we just want as many people on a daily basis to live to fight another day. You know who I see in your wheelhouse as always being inspirational to you too? Grandma. Mo, my granny. I oh, love, I love level. social media grandma. She's grandma is the, the, the voice of reason, the words of wisdom. And yep. I love when you guys are doing videos and you're talking to grandma. I love the way she looks at you. There's no woman that's ever going to look at you like grandma. I'm just telling you that right now. She is my, she is the awareness to not only me, but I think other people. She's very wise. She's 91 years old. She's going to be 92 this year. I love she her. Is, but this is what she is. She's a real life superhero. Like she is 1000%. She is a real life superhero. Yeah, she's she is awesome. always, she's she the rock always, star. 
No offense yeah. to you. She's the rock star. When you guys are together, totally. she's got she's got the whole it's all about grandma to me. Yeah. The thing is about her also when it comes to like my upbringing also like I was saying I think I really got the fact that um I think I got more than anything that whole ideology of don't focus on a plan B really from her because she told me, she goes, son, you're definitely, you got a lot of ambition and you got a lot of like big dreams. But I remember for all the people that told me that I couldn't do it growing up, so to say, she was always the one that said to me, if you wake up every single day and you want to be a doctor, then go be a doctor. Just be the best doctor that you can be. If you wake up every day and you want to be a dentist or you want to be, you know, an actor or you want to be a sculptor or you want to be a, a police officer, whatever it is, that's what you're supposed to do. Just make sure that you are the best at it and constantly remember that you can always refine yourself, that you can always get better at it, that you know, 10,000 hours to master something. And then if you master it, you know, go another 10,000 more hours. She was just always about bettering who I was. And she really gave me my work ethic. And you know what I love? I love that she's here to see it. I so love that. I, she, I, I love, I think that so is the biggest, I, one of the biggest blessings so in I. your life that grandma is here to know that you did it. You listened to her. She influenced you. You're playing arenas. You're playing yeah. ginormo festivals and she knows that you're doing it and she's been yeah. a part of that and she's still a part of that. And I think that, man, what what a blessing for, for you to have that. That's incredible. You walk into our house and it's like a it's like a shine down factory. Oh, I love it's, that. It's, it's the it's, it's the shrine down. Is it the shrine it, down in there? Like a shrine to shine down? Just, I don't I don't even necessarily know if it's like a, a shrine. It's just she, it's just it's like it's little detail type things that she has in there from like the very, very beginning, even before, like when I was in, like I got in my first band, like real band, like we were playing in front of people when I was 14, I had a fake ID that said I was 18. Of course, I was in clubs and stuff like that. Like I remember the very first time that we played, there was a, a club that I came up. Um, there was the Mercury theater, because I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. So there was like the Mercury Theater, then the Electric Ballroom. But then there was a place called Blue Cats. It only held like about 600 people. The very first time Shinedown played Blue, Ca Blue Cats in my hometown, she was on the rail in the front row. Rail like, riding with grandma. People, with people moshing around her and everything else and just had the biggest smile on her face. And she just watched the whole show. Like, I love she's it. the best. I love it. I love her. Talk about somebody who can help your mental health. Have it, having oh, her in your yeah. life. There, there's no, there's no doubt about that. Listen, you're so the real deal. You are always so generous to us. I cannot thank you enough. I'm going to thank you in person because I cannot wait to see you at the Prudential Center on September 24th. We want everybody to get their tickets. Come on out. Make it a big old Jersey shine down family reunion. And I want to thank you also for uh, helping us raise awareness for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. My walk again is Sunday, October 29th at Verona Park. I want everybody to join Team Rock and Rough. We'll put you in the running, of course, for one of these beautiful, amazing, we're going to cut away to it now, uh, Shine Down posters. Uh, and you guys have just been so kind and so amazing to, to help us with this. And um, I thank you. You know, you're one of my favorite people. You're my favorite guy. And uh, it's just always Always great to catch up with you and a blessing to know you. I remember when we met the first time, 2001, in the barbecue joint. First time I ever had Shine Down on. And, yep. um, you know, my, my buddies ever since, you're a, you're a valued and treasured friend. Well, I'm going to tell you uh, this from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you are good for everyone's mental health. You are just the most amazing light and incredible, beautiful energy. I appreciate you. I adore you. Whatever we can do to help with the walk that you're doing with the AFSP, obviously we'll be there for you. We love New Jersey. We love you. And it's just a blessing to know you. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. You can make me cry. Thank you, Brent. I love you. Mwah. I love you Safe too. on tour. Bye, guys, I can't wait girls. to see you in Jersey. I'll see you soon. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Gary and Men's Chicken and Ribs on Erie Avenue in Wayne. The best Jersey grilled, not smoked, 
Barbecue. Menu at GaryandMegsChickenRibs.com. And by Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway.